So, um, we are going to mix up some skin tones today. Um, here's one I produced earlier, yesterday in fact. Um, so yeah, this is basically just to give you an idea of the stage we want to get ourselves to um, while doing this exercise. So um, this is actually under a sheet of cling film. I don't know, is it making much difference? It's probably probably some light bouncing off it, but um, it's just to keep the pain fresh. Um, that so you can use it the next day. So basically, this came about. Um, using our Zorn palette, which I mentioned yesterday, so that's just white, uh, yellow ochre, cadmium red, and uh, ivory black, which I have used all of, but you can still see it there. Um, and yeah, basically using those four colours, you can pretty much mix 99% of the skin tones that pretty much exist in humanity, so that's um, it's actually mad. Um, yeah, you can get purple and green tones into skin, you know, for reflected light and stuff using the black because it's actually, as I mentioned, like Father Zulu would say, it's really, 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 really dark blue. So, a bit of that into yellow will give you a bit of green, a bit of that into red, purple. So, yeah. Um, cool, okay, so basically how I got to this point... Um, you start off by mixing a base skin tone, which is this lad down here, that's kind of terracotta sort of colour. And that's basically just a mix of um, mostly the yellow ochre, and then just um, just kind of add the red into it gradually. Um, because the pigment in the red is so strong, it has a tendency to take over the mix um, and kind of overpower the yellow. Um, yeah, so that's a kind of gradual process to get to there. And then usually what I do once I get to that point is that I just take a teeny little bit of that just for a tester and I mix it with some white now I'm talking probably like 90% white 10% of the base mix just to get in and around this colour here um, now obviously these values here are based on um, to be used with our reference photo of the lady in the headdress so these will obviously change you know um, for more you, she's fairly white skinned you know she's not super tanned obviously you can use this palette to mix up black skin tones Asian skin tones you know very kind of Mediterranean looking you know dark Caucasian skin um, but yeah just for the purpose of this uh, for that um, reference photo this is kind of what I went with so basically we get all this red, or this uh, yellow and red base mix, um, I'm going to call it, and uh, using using that we get our f mix with mostly white, or it's mostly white paint with a small bit of the mix, that will give us our first value. And um, once that's looking fairly there, thereabouts, in comparison to the, the lightest value of the skin on our reference photo, that's when I'm kind of happy enough to kind of that, that this original base mix isn't too red or isn't too yellow basically because that's going to throw off this value as well as the other four. So usually I start off with, um, with, with, with this first value, this lightest one, and once I'm kind of happy with that in terms of the amount of red and yellow in it, then I'll hop straight down to this last one here, which is like our shadow value. And that basically is just this base mix tone and black straight out of the tube mixed together to give you a sort of, um, it's effectively just a very, very dark kind of warm brown. So um, yeah, and it's just important that you mix up and a considerable amount of that shadow mix together because that mix goes in with these with the remaining three kind of mid-tone values between the light and the dark you know so these three mixes are basically a um, a mixture of white shadow and your base mix now I'm obviously going to go through all this um, from scratch here in a minute just to show just to walk you through it so I'm kind of making more sense 
So, um, yeah, rather than me probably talking about how I made these mixes, I'm just going to make them again um, from scratch on a different palette that's hanging around back here somewhere. Um, yeah. It feels like being on a cooking show with the whole, here's what I made earlier thing, but yeah, so what I might do, I'm kind of happy enough with those, um, those mixes, so I'll probably be referring back to them, um, off screen, just to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm kind of mixing up the same values again. Anyway, okay, so we'll, uh, set up our palette and we will, uh, go again. as another palette this is a super fancy I think it cost two euro or something from the art supply shop probably should have got out the paints for it certain this uh, right. so white yellow ochre cadmium red black ivory black to be specific so I usually lay them out in this order, white, yellow, red, black. Basically in terms of, you know, their chroma really, I suppose, the kind of intensity of the colour from lightest to, to darkest. So um yeah, let's get it onto the palette. You don't need um you don't need white spirit or medium or any of that stuff for this. We're just mixing up uh straight up paint together. Um yeah, so Oh, it was good to get a good bit of white. As a matter of fact, the kind of quantities of the paint you will require will kind of go down as you come along the scale this way, you know. Um, just going to take my Gansey off because I don't want to get paint all over it. So yeah, white and then maybe in and around the same amount of yellow. A good splodge of it anyway. Because we'll, we'll mix up a good, a good puddle of that uh, that base mix of the red and yellow together. Um, when it comes to red, as a matter of fact, you probably need less red out on your palette um, than you do uh, black, just because it's such a strong pigment. So literally, just like a little, just a little square to that will do you. And uh, yeah, then we'll get our black. Might even use a bit more, put out a small bit more black than you would the red. Uh, it's such a powerful pigment as well, it kind of takes over things. So you don't really need to go crazy with it. So yeah, first step, gonna mix the yellow and the red together to get ourselves that base mix from the last palette there, which is uh, that sort of co coppery, terracotta-ish sort of colour. So um, I'm using palette knives here. You can use um, you can use brushes as well, but unfortunately, the thing about mixing with brushes, if you're trying to get big, you know, um, amounts of paint together, your brush is just going to soak up a lot of it. And uh, yeah, you spend a lot of time cleaning your brushes. And just cleaning a lot of paint off your brushes. Palette blades are kind of handy and they're also very cheap. Um, they're just bog standard generic ones from, you know, the kit that probably costs a bit of fiver or something like that. Um, yeah, so let's do it. Get yourself a bit of kitchen paper as well for wiping off your uh, palette knives. Um, so, what we'll do, we'll create a kind of a, our base mix just kind of over here out of the way sort of um, and w what we'll do with our skin tone values is that we'll run them from light to dark it's kind of in a line along here there'll be five of them in total so that's how we are going to set this up every time you um, every time you are finished putting out a colour with a palette knife give it a little wipe before going into the next colour on your palette because you it's just kinda of handy that way so you're not like muddying up these 
uh, pigments. Um, you know, you're not mixing red into this and you're not mixing black into your white. They're just how they come out of the tube. You can do your mixing. There's plenty of room over here to be getting your mixes done. So we've got ourselves a little, um, our little pile of yellow there. And now what we're going to do, I would say by I, like, I reckon that's probably 10 parts yellow to one part red for them. And we'll just start mixing that together here. Fortunately, there's some sort of status bar on my camera in this exact spot. So, can't really see what it looks like, but hopefully it's not looking too bad on the screen. Um, yeah, so I can kind of tell from this already. Um, that it probably needs a bit more red in it um, to get it to um, match up with the one I made yesterday. Um, just be careful, not careful, but just when you're doing this, uh, when you're mixing with your palette knives or whatever, just make sure that there's no kind of streaks within the mix. Um, you know, basically just mix it up good and proper till it's uh, till it's all the kind of uniform mix between the two colours that you use to begin with. Um, now I'm just going to take a little test, just take my palette knife over to my other palette here now and see. Well, it's not too far away, it does need a small bit more red though. So, like I said, I kind of keep another palette knife so I'm not wasting paints just to get these bits off. Stick that there and then I'll wipe the what little is left before going back in for another little bit of red. Oh, like a very, very, very small amount there. Now I know that's probably out of focus somewhat, but uh, yeah, and just get that in again. That cadmium red is such a strong pigment, it can just go local if you use too much of it, it kind of overpowers. A lot of things, a lot of the right pigments will do that. You know, the permanent alizarin crimson would be another one that I use, and that's kind of the same. Whatever family of pigments they're made from. Cool. Yeah, I think I'm kind of happy with that. Um, just. similar to the one I created yesterday now so I'm happy enough with that now what I am going to do just to show you um, what I would usually do when it comes to mixing these bigger pools of paint um, together is that I'd be kind of erring on the side of caution here um, quantity wise it, it, it will probably be enough but just in case it isn't I'm going to make another pool of that, I don't know if it should be called a swatch of that same pigment or that same colour mix right next to it. I won't mix them together until the one I'm about to make looks the exact same as that. So, you know, just so we're not running out of paint. Um, when it comes to mixing our other values, it's just safe to have a good amount of this base mix together. Because like I said, you're going to have to make a fairly large amount of your darkest shadow mix there from that last uh, from that last palette that I had done from yesterday. So yeah, so see straight away. I was like, oh yeah, I definitely have enough red there now to match up straight away. So that's exactly the reason why I don't mix them together, because that's, as you can see, hopefully you can see it. I don't love to be able to get that thing off my screen. Um, this one's too yellow, so it needs more red to get up, so that's so that nice little coppery sort of tone. So again, wipe off your knife. Touch of red, always good to use. 
too little rather than too much and you can see how much even that small little bit of um, red, the cadmium red is just like heating up that mix considerably even though to be perfectly honest it's not actually enough. Oh! exactly what I said not to do. And if you find if you're doing something like this it's just a kind of additional and subtractional reductive sort of process I suppose you'd say. You know if I add in too much red here it's just a simple matter of putting in a bit more yellow to get to dial it back down a, a notch you know. So yeah, this red is tricking me now at the moment because I keep thinking I'm using enough and I'm not at all. But sure it's good practice. Yeah, I'd say we're getting here now. I had a feeling this video could be a small bit boring for a live stream. Even though I love doing this, but uh, if I just upload it like this, you can kind of skip and forward, skip back and forward through it uh, to your heart's content. And I get to record it on a proper camera so you can pro properly see stuff. Um, yeah. I'm gonna get super, super, super predicted here, and I'm gonna put in a, like a fleck of red into that because I think I could do with it. Like I'm, um, you know, focus. No. Eh. Anyway, cameras on manual focus. Just remembered, so that's probably why you can see that. Cool. They look fairly identical now. Let's see if I can zoom. I just uh, do this and this now, just so you can. No. Yeah, they look pretty good to me there. Sorry, there's a bit of a uh, shadow being cast from somewhere over this. I think the sun's gone in of a Velux over there. But anyway, I digress. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so that means I'll just slap the two of these together and then we can start mixing. Now I might come back to this in a minute because I'm what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little tester of this base mix with like a whole pile of white just over here, just a small little one just to see if what way it kind of is coming out, you know, is it too red, is it too yellow, etc., etc. So take me my little mini palette knife here now, which still has a bit of red on it, so I'm just going to mix that into this whole. Here now because we don't want any of those. Just want to mix the whole batch together. And just from looking at that pile, I don't think we're going to run out. Because it's happened to me loads of times before, you know, you make like you think you have enough of this mix together, and then you go off and you mix your values uh, together this way. And you've used all this and then you realise that you haven't had enough and you're trying to make like one of the values in the middle and then you're trying to remake your base mix because you've run out of your original one and then the one you make again is wrong and then the whole thing is, you know, basically <coughs> ruins. So yeah, mistakes have to be made but uh you know, 
if you make them enough times and you stop making them, those same mistakes, you're doing a good job then. So I keep telling myself, I don't know. Yeah, so, um, this. Yeah, um, just gonna use the small knife there for a second. This is actually looking fairly good. Probably a bit too much right on it, it's not there now. Although, yeah, I think, um, I think that's okay. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit more of the base mix into it and then I'd say we're good to go with this. So what I'll do, just going to see how this comes out here. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty good to me now. So well, what we'll do here now, because I don't have enough for the painting here. So we're going to actually just do the exact same thing as we did. Um, with the base mix, we're just gonna mix this up. Sorry, I'm just checking whether. Yeah, it's a teeny bit more red actually. So we, w once we're happy with what we have here, and we know that there isn't enough of it on the palette, we'll do the exact same as we did with um with the base mix. We'll just leave this as it is, and we'll mix up another uh, pile of it right next to it um, until they look the same. And we then we can just mix them together, and that would be our value number one. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Sorry, now I'm probably casting a shadow over this whole thing. But you know, I don't have a proper lighting rig or any of that stuff. And then, like, gaff. Um, yeah. You can go wild when you're mixing all this stuff, you know, if you want to mix, these are too close together, if you want to mix piles and piles of paint together, you know, go crazy, there's nothing, don't let me stop you. Um, and haven't actually, never went to art school or you know, art college and I never did art in the school for the leaving or the juniors or anything like that but I did do um a kind of well it's not kind of like I did a like a week long portrait making course um portrait painting course um yeah and the guy Brian um who does it is always saying to paint like a rich man so just basically makes loads of paint together which is actually pretty good advice and um, sometimes I still forget it because I want to conserve paint. Um, but you know, there's not really a need for that. This just needs another little bit of red. It's a, it's a bit too um, high chroma, as the man says. Probably too much red now. Um, I think the old squinting trick is good for this as well. You know, it can throw up um, if you're seeing a, a big difference. If you're if you're kind of looking for a subtle difference, if you think you have the colours bang on, kind of just squint. Not even squint at it, but sort of like look straight past it. If that makes sense, I'm glad I'm not actually recording my face at the moment here because I like have a thousand yards there looking at. Too. So I'm actually happy, yeah, with these two. I'm just gonna lob them into a pile together here now. 
and uh, yeah I think that's enough of that now what we're going to do now straight out to the other end of the scale and um, we're going to mix up a fairly considerable batch of our uh, shadow value down. I'm going to put it down here somewhere just to give a bit of room between the. F I'll have five of these values in total, so we got one here already. We've got five is going to be down here, and we'll just put another three. <laughs> I'm sorry for sniffing. Uh, yeah, so take a good wedge. I'm going to take a fair amount of this here now with your base mix and just plop it down there. Try and get most of it off before I give it a wipe, and then to darken this, we're going to start using our black. Um, yeah, we'll just use uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just the shot the the base mix and just the black here. So um, I'm just going to use maybe like. Just gonna try and get a ratio of this together. Maybe like four parts, no, maybe five parts base to one part black, just to start us off, and we will see what that does for us. Yeah, it's gonna need more black, I'd say, but we'll keep mixing it all the way through together just to get a better idea. You can really go crazy here to like make loads of this stuff because um, it's used to make the other, you're using it in conjunction with the uh, base mix and the white for us to make um, our remaining three values between here and the lightest one. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put another bit of black into that I'd say. This one's nice small, just a little touch, maybe about half the amount you started with the first time around there. Um, the half the amount of black you initially mixed in, we'll say. So maybe now you could probably try this if, to start off with like four parts of the base to uh, to one part black, a sort of eighty twenty split that sort of way. here now and check. I don't think it's half as dark as the one I had originally. No. Right. Yeah. I think the one I might have made yesterday is even just a bit too black so I'm not going to match up to that exactly. So that's literally the exact same amount of black paint I'd say as I put in the second time around there again. Yeah now we're talking here I'd say right. And it's starting to fall apart. Yeah, um, so we're going to, um, we're going to start working our way down the value scale towards um, we've got another three mixes to go so we've got number one our shadow and we're going to call them for uh, the purposes of this exercise this is number one this is number sh uh, this is our shadow mix and then we're going to have two three and four as well so um, hmm. oh, I don't know lads I don't want to be sending you wrong here, but I don't think that's dark enough still. So, more black. If I have added in too much black. Same process as the base mix. If it gets too dark, we'll just put in a bit of that to lighten it up. Mm. 
what we're going to end up with here now when this um when this exercise is finished our our, our palette basically going to look like you know like one of those Dulux color cars things with the swatches of the paint that you can buy in the in the shop for like your walls and stuff yeah it's it's going to look like that it's just going to be like light darker 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 darkest don't know what I'd be painting any of the walls in my house this any of these colors but um that's kind of what we're going for I don't know that I mixed the one I did yesterday a bit too dark then as well at the same time do you know that sort of way so I think now what I have there I'm just going to go with so now that that's done um, we'll start mixing the value number four. To be honest with you now, I reckon that's probably, I'd say it's probably three quarter, three quarters base and one quarter, um, one quarter of uh, black, or there or thereabouts, th three parts, one part, um, that sort of uh, ratio I'd say. So um, yeah, just play around, you don't want it too, like, you know, see that nice kind of cho dark chocolatey colour, something like that would be what I'd be going for, if you don't get it, looking the exact same as that, that's no problem, like, especially if it's your first time doing it, I mean, come on, <laughs> give yourself some bit of credit, a little bit of a break, um, so yeah, so we're going to do value four, which is kind of an easy enough one in comparison to the ones at the, in First, it's number three and number two because you're mixing three kind of elements together for those two. Anyway, so I'll just show you. So we're going to take a, a wedge, take a handy enough bit of the old uh, shadow mix here now. Take another little bit. I'm just going to put a bit, small bit of weight into that. Like literally just, uh, whew. Um, what have we there now? I'm going to say that's probably like five shadow to one white. And it's just kind of like a gradual step down from your from your shadow into this. You don't want it to be like, ho boom, you know, crazy like way lighter version. And then you don't want it to be too similar either because there's no kind of graduation between those two values. You know, they could just end up looking like one big dark mess on your actual painting. Then we'll say. So yeah, so that's literally just the shadow and um and some of the uh and and just some white mixed together and um I'm kinda happy with the step in between them so I'm gonna move on to the next one down. Sometimes what can happen actually I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes rather than confusing you. So yeah, our next one is we're gonna get um another piece of our shadow mix. Probably gonna end up having to make more of this again. True to form. So we got a bit of that and then we take a bit of our base mix that we used or that we um, got together initially and um, Just put that there, and then just a small bit of weight, maybe half of what you have in there for uh, the other two. This isn't enough paint at all. Let's we'll see where this gets us to, and we can. Yeah, so there's actually. There's, I haven't made enough of this at all. 
but there's actually there's too much um I think there's probably too much red in here or too much of the the base mix. So another bit of the shadow um less of that of the base mix this time and less again of white. Um, that's too much. Is that too much? Yeah. Then you can just mix all this together because you're not matching one to the other. Kind of happy with that value there now, except I just uh, straight up did make enough of it. So I'm going to have to do what we did earlier again and just uh, make a little another bit of it, just uh, just side by side there, um, and just mix them up good and proper till we get uh, till we get them to mix. So. Got a bit of shadow, you got your shadow, mostly shadow for this. Less, maybe half that amount of white. And um, maybe half again of, uh, or half of your base and then half again of white. So sort of like a two. Hmm, I'm going to put that. Let's. same to me so yeah I think we have enough there and if we don't that's not the end of the world just have to make more so now um, the way this is shaping up I am going to wager now that I'm looking at the picture as well the reference photo um, that this is probably a bit too light so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up this value here to where I think it fits in with these other three and then I will just uh, add more of the base mix into this I reckon to get us to you know make this a cohesive sort of series you know I don't want these to be dark lighter 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 again and then like way too light you know you want them to kind of just yeah so for this one um we're gonna go base and take yourself a nice little piece of that maybe even a bit more again Some white, handy enough bit of white, and then you're just gonna cool it down with just a small little bit of your um, your shadow mix that you would have made um, with your uh, your base mix and the black. And then we'll get them in together. And now we're, we we kind of made a couple of kind of grayish kind of grey brownie sort of 
colour is there before this. Now this is going to probably take a wee bit of a hop towards your kind of pinky sort of tone. It's a teeny bit too hot at the moment so I'm just going to put a bit more weight into it. So as you can see there's too much of a step between this and that. So just to offset that, I'm just gonna get more base into into our value one mix there. And um, we'll see how that turns out. I really hope this is making sense, and if it's not, I'm sorry. And uh, but like I said, you can just go back and watch the video again. Yeah, this is making more sense now. Just in terms of, I think the um, before I just added the base mix into this, it was kind of more of a highlight tone than um, than an actual um, proper skin tone. If that makes sense, you know, I could have used that sort of mix for um, you know, like the tip of the nose on the reference photo, or like the bridge between her eyes. Um, and I think uh, she has another uh, kind of one just on the on her chin. I don't know why I'm pointing at my face because you can't see it. Um, so yeah, in terms of the steps there now, um, I'm fairly I'm fairly happy with how they look. Um, I might just put a teeny, teeny, teeny little bit of red. That's too much. It's probably still too much into this. After, you know, if I put too much in, I'll just put more weight in. Yeah. Cool. This is looking good. Um, sometimes when I get to this stage and I find myself with a kind of good whack of this base mix left and not as much as I think I'd need of the shadow over here. I'll do exactly what I did the last time and I'll just take a bit of this just so I'm not caught short and I'll just mix it up with some black um, to match what's existing on the palette already and uh, just so I don't run out. It's got too much black in it this one this time so. I know I've done this three times already, but you're like, it's not bad. You should probably, to be perfectly honest, you almost spend more time. Well, definitely, as I personally spend as much time mixing colours together on the palette than I do painting those colours onto the canvas because, you know. You, if you want to do it properly, you just you need you need to have your colors on the ball. Yeah, Can't be enough for that. So there we go, another big little, a big little, a big pile of 
shadow mix. So we're not cut short. So yeah, that's how I set up my palette um, with five different skin tones. Um, just using a mix of four paint colors out of a tube. So white, um, yellow ochre, cadmium red. And you can see how much cadmium red is left. You know, it's, it's so strong. You know, I made a big pile of that and it was like all my yellow is gone. But I still have like two thirds of the red that I put out. Same with the black. And, um, but you know, it's a good idea to just leave them there. Um, it's not as if you can stick them back in the tube anyway. So yeah, that's, um, that's how I set that up. Um, for the initial stage of um, putting the values down on the painting and um, yeah so I suppose our next video will be us putting these paints onto the painting so yeah cool I'll go off and record that and hope you enjoy this one <laughs>